DE students, this video is to discuss and review circuit theory and how you can calculate the different concepts of circuits by hand. So we're talking about Ohm's law, Kirchhoff's law. Um, for a lot of you, this will be review from principles of engineering. For some of you, this will be brand new. Either way, make sure you're taking notes and let's get started. This lesson will focus on 1.1.5 circuit theory laws, specifically the hand calculations for circuit theory laws. In this lesson, students will review or learn Ohm's and Kirchhoff's laws and other basic principles of digital electronics. So let's take a look at the basics of electricity. An understanding of the basics of electricity requires the understanding of three fundamental concepts, voltage, current, and resistance. A direct mathematical relationship exists between voltage, resistant, and current in all electronic circuits. Just as a reminder, current is the flow of electrical charge through an electronic circuit. The direction of current is opposite to the direction of the electron flow, and current is measured in amperes, or amps. Voltage is the electrical force that causes current to flow in a circuit, and it is measured in volts. And resistance is a measure of opposition to current flow, and it is measured in ohms. So let's take a look at an analogy. The flow of water from one tank to another is a good analogy for an electrical circuit and the mathematical relationship between voltage, resistance, and current. In the image, you can see the difference in the force, flow, and the opposition inside of the example. The force is the difference in the water levels, which is equivalent to voltage. The flow of the water between the tanks is equivalent to current and the opposition is the valve that limits the amount of water and is equivalent to resistance. So on this slide, we're gonna take a look at some circuits and schematics. Below you see an image of a flashlight, its block diagram, and its circuit schematic. This is the image of the flashlight. This is what we would refer to as a block diagram. And this is what we would say is a schematic diagram or a more technical diagram to display how the circuit works. Let's take a closer look at these flashlight schematics. On the left, we have a closed circuit that's indicated by the switch that is closed, and we can note that there is current flowing through the circuit. We can note that by this little star symbol here, and also by the fact that the lamp is lit. The lamp is acting as resistance within the circuit, and it uses energy to produce light and heat. Over here to the right, we have an open circuit, indicated by the switch not touching the rest of the circuit. There is no current flow, the lamp is off, and the lamp is resistance, but it's not using any energy. So let's talk about current flow. Conventional current assumes that the current flows out of the positive side of the battery through the circuit and back to the negative side of the battery. This was the convention established when electricity was first discovered, but it's technically incorrect. Electron flow is what actually happens. The electrons flow out of the negative side of the battery through the circuit and back to the positive side of the battery. So, why does that matter? Well, the direction of the current flow doesn't affect what the current is doing. Thus, it doesn't make any difference which convention is used as long as you're consistent. Both conventional current and electron flow are used. In general, science disciplines use electron flow, whereas engineering disciplines use conventional current. Since this is an engineering course, everything we'll be referencing is conventional current. Now let's take a look at Ohm's law. Ohm's law defines the relationship between voltage, current, and resistance in an electric circuit. So Ohm's law states that current in a resistor varies in direct proportion to the voltage applied to it and is inversely proportional to the resistor's value. Mathematically, we can state that as I equals V over R, or in a more schematic way, V over a resistor with current flowing through positive to negative. So where I is the current, amperes, V is the potential difference, volts, and R is the resistance, ohms. Now, thankfully, we can also set this up in Ohm's Law Triangle, which makes this really easy to figure out how to calculate the other, to calculate one of these values. So if we wanted to calculate current, in the triangle, we would cover the I with our finger, and it indicates that in order to calculate current, we have V over R, and that's measured in amperes. If we want to calculate resistance, we could put our finger over the letter R, and we would have V over I, measured in ohms. And then if we wanted to calculate voltage, it would be I times R and we would receive and we would use the unit of volts. So let's take an exam take a look at an example of Ohm's law. The flashlight shown uses a six volt battery and has a bulb with a resistance of 150 ohms. 
When the flashlight is on, how much current will be drawn from the battery? Take a moment to solve this problem. So here's the solution. Looking at the schematic diagram, we can see all of those components laid out in a schematic. Mathematically, we know that we need to calculate voltage over resistance in order to get our current. So the end result is that we have 40 milliamps or 0.04 amps as the solution. Let's take a look at some circuit configuration. Components in a circuit can be connected in one of two ways, either as a series circuit or a parallel circuit. In a series circuit, components are connected end to end and there is only a single path for current to flow. In a parallel circuit, both ends of the components are connected together and there are multiple paths for the current to flow. So a series circuit is exactly what it sounds like. It is a series of components, one after the other after the other, just like books or movies. Parallel circuits, we often see the components lined up parallel to each other and then connected on both sides. So let's take a look at the characteristics of a series circuit. Current flowing through every series component is equal. The total resistance, RT, is equal to the sum of all of the resistances, so R1 plus R2 plus R3. The sum of all the voltage drops, VR1, VR2, VR, and VR2, VR3 is what that should say, is equal to the total applied voltage. This is called Kirchhoff's voltage law. So let's take a look at a series circuit example. For the series circuit shown, use the laws of circuit theory to calculate the following. The total resistance, the current flowing through each component, IT, IR1, IR2, and IR3, and the voltage across each component, VT, VR1, VR2, and VR3. Use the results to verify Kirchhoff's voltage law. This is going to take some time, so pause the video now. If you've hit play, that means you're ready to see the answers to these questions. So let's continue. So let's look at our first solution for total resistance. RT is equal to R1 plus R2 plus R3. In this circuit, R1 is 220 ohms, R2 is 470 ohms, and R3 is 1.2 kilo ohms. That means that RT is equal to 1,890 1, ohms or 1.89 kilo ohms. Now, looking at current through each component, we're going to use Ohm's law to calculate 12 volts over 1.89 kilo ohms, which is going to give us 6.349 milliamps. So since this is a series circuit, IT is equal to IR1 equals IR2 equals IR3, which is 6.349 milliamps. Now let's take a look at the voltage across each component. Using Ohm's law, we can calculate that IR1 is 6.349 milliamps multiplied by the value of R1, which is 220 ohms, which is equal to 1.397 volts. Then, looking at VR2, we can take that same current, so the current for IR2, multiplied by the value of R2, so 6.349 milliamps, multiplied by 470 ohms, gives us 2.984 volts. The last one that we have to do is for R3, so we take the value of R3, 1.2 kilo ohms, and multiply it by 6.349 milliamps, and that results in 7.619 volts. So let's verify Kirchhoff's voltage law. If VT is equal to VR1 plus VR2 plus VR3, then VR1 plus VR2 plus VR3 should be equal to 12 volts, and indeed they are. So now let's take a look at parallel circuits. Parallel, the voltage across every parallel component is equal in a parallel circuit. The total resistance is equal to the reciprocal of the sum of the reciprocal. So this is a little bit different than in a series circuit. The sum of all of the currents in each branch, IR1, IR2, IR3, is equal to the total current. So this is called Kirchhoff's current law. So let's complete an example using a parallel circuit. So for the parallel circuit shown, use the laws of circuit theory to calculate the following. The total resistance, 
the voltage across each component, so VT, VR1, VR2, and VR3, the current flowing through each component, so IT, IR1, IR2, and IR3, and then we're going to use these results to verify Kirchhoff's current law. Again, this is going to take a few moments, so pause the video now. Okay, so let's look at the answers. If you're not ready because you're still doing some of this math, pause the video. So, here we are looking at total resistance. So RT is equal to 1 over 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3. I know that's a little confusing, but once you work through it, it'll make sense. So, we then input the values of the distance with different resistors. R1 is equal to 470 ohms, R2 is 2.2 kilo ohms, and R3 is 3.3 kilo ohms. Now, once we have all of that math calculated, our total is going to be 346.59 ohms. So, the voltage across each component, since this is a parallel circuit, means that we have 15 volts. Now let's take a look at the current through each component. So we're taking IR1 equal to V over R1 over R1. That's Ohm's law. So once we plug in those numbers, we are looking at 31.915 milliamps. We do the same thing for IR2. We're using VR2 and R2 to get 6.818 milliamps. IR3 is 4.54 milliamps after we substitute in the values for R3. And then IT is then the voltage total over the resistance total. So we have 15 volts over 346.59 ohms, resulting in 43.278 milliamps. Using all, of these, using all of these data points, we can then verify Kirchhoff's current law because IT is equal to IR1 plus IR2 plus IR3. Both of these values add up to 43.278 milliamps. So here's a little summary of Kirchhoff's laws. So Kirchhoff's voltage law is that the sum of all of the voltage drops in a series circuit equal the total applied voltage. The summary of Kirchhoff's current law is that the total current in a parallel circuit equals the sum of the individual branches for current. All right, that is it for our Ohm's law, Kirchhoff's law, and all things hand calculation for circuit theory. I will see you all in class. Bye.